Are you still excited? No. Hi, it's Justin and Bethany. Let's do that Black. one more time. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, are we ready? Yeah. Hey, it's Justin and Bethany from the Flat Fam. Sorry, we haven't posted in two weeks, but we felt like has we should... Has it been two weeks? It has been two weeks. Cool, cool. We're <laughs> doing really good. We're doing so so good. <laughs> we thought we should come back and do an after the hurricane and tell you kind of what happened. Well, if it's been two weeks, we're definitely alive. Yes. <laughs> we're home. We're just getting back to normal busy life after vacation. Well, I mean, that wasn't really a vacation. <laughs> it was a little bit crazy and we're going to talk about that. We definitely needed a vacation from that vacation, but we both came back to like massive amounts of work and that's probably why I didn't realize it had been two weeks. So where did we leave off? I guess I the last time that we posted a video it was the video where we were talking about just getting through the hurricane right and right. it was for us thankfully it was not a horrible ordeal. We I had some employees there that were without power without internet for a week or so. We have friends that their area is flooded but luckily they're all safe. You know, it could have been worse, but we were at a Disney resort, so it was, we were pretty well taken care of. So the last thing we did was what? So I guess we need to talk about, we did have to extend our stay at Grand Destino because we couldn't go anywhere. Yeah, we were supposed to transfer the day of the hurricane. We That night we were supposed to transfer over to Sapphire Falls at Universal, Universal and we couldn't transfer. So we ended up having to extend another night that was not cheap, but it was it was okay. But the nice thing was, and I think that this might have helped us, was the concierge, because we were staying club level, the concierge was able to wait in the line for us, extend it for us, they'd handled all the details. That was nice. Yeah, we walked into the lounge and they had helped us do something else that we were... They, helped, they took our magic band pluses from us oh, right. and were like, don't worry about setting them up, we'll do it. We already knew how to set them up. Silly us, we bought some, set them up here at home, and forgot them. them. So we had to buy new ones that we will now give to our girls. But they took them from us and set them up. So we knew that yeah. they would help. So anyway, they kind of had said at that point, we'll do anything you need. And so we just kind of said to them, do you think you could help us possibly extend our stay? Because when we were downstairs in the mm -hmm. lobby, the line was crazy. They took care of everything for us. They also took care of us through, like we've already said, they took care of us through the entire hurricane. Okay. As people, I feel horribly guilty because as people were downstairs waiting for box lunches, we were upstairs having food made for us. And that was, yes, it was a perk we paid for, but it was extremely generous of the staff. In fact, we became pretty good friends with a couple of the staff members. It felt horrible that they were there, but they were so nice and Right, because they had to stay over as well. So they were working 10 hour days. Yeah, they were working 10 hour days and then they got to sleep and then back on shift eight hours later. My brother had been staying over with his family at Saratoga Springs. And at Saratoga Springs, they only have the one quick service restaurant. That is a massive resort. So all of those people were there getting box lunches and nothing else was open. So we invited them over to our resort, hoping that we could actually get a reservation at Toledo and they could eat there with us. They right. came over around four o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, I think it opened at five to be able to go get reservations at Toledo. And crazy thing is, is we had not gotten reservations at Toledo, but people had, some of the cast members even during our stay were like, oh, you're staying at Grand Destino. You should totally go eat at Toledo. It's beautiful up there. And so we thought, wow, this like worked out that we're gonna be able to go eat at Toledo. We go up there right as it opens. Well, we had heard, before then, we had heard that it was a prefixed menu through the the next couple of days and that it was first come, first serve. And so we went up right when it opened, not thinking that everyone was gonna do that. And so the line was already three hours long. Finally got our name in, everything was great. We decided to go down to the lounge and hang out and just wait our time because there was nothing else we could do. We just played games and hung out and had snacks. By the time we went back up to Toledo, it had been the three hours, we went back up and they were like, sorry, it's gonna be another, what, I think they said 40 minutes. I think so. And it was almost nine o'clock and 
my brother and his family were just done. Yeah. So they were like, we're good. We're just going to go back to our, our villa and hang out. And Bethany and I decided to stay. And what was our surprise? It was the same as the lounge. So we had just In other words, the snacking. menu that we waited. Yeah. <laughs> we had been snacking on all of the menu items. <laughs> Bethany and I ended up eating at Toledo. I'm going to pause right here and say we had an entire schedule of planned videos coming out of this trip and we weren't able to do any of them because of the hurricane. This is what we're getting is kind of like a follow up to, hey, we survived and of course we survived, but but that that's what we're doing. We, we've taken all those video topics and we're going to do them. We'll be there again in a, in a month or two. And so we'll, we'll pick them up then. But we will have a few videos like hotel tours. I don't know what else. Maybe food, maybe, maybe some food. dining. Yeah. But yeah, the, we did not make it to either of the Halloween parties. We were really hoping to get some video footage there at Justin and at Horror Nights and me at Mickey's Not So Scary, but that did get canceled. In fact, it was the same night that we went to Toledo that we should have been at the Halloween Not parties. So scary. Yeah. <laughs> so after we went to Toledo and ate the same food we've been eating all evening. Yeah, it is beautiful there. Oh, but Toledo it, is a gorgeous room. For those of you that have been, you know. Yeah, it, it was disappointing though. The food was disappointing and they're really just, by the time, I mean, we were getting there at the very end of the night and there just wasn't even that much left. And we paid where we could have just gotten it for free. At yeah, the lounge. so it was, they had it, it was $30 per person. Uh, drinks were extra. So they had, I believe they had no cocktails, but they had beer and wine and the wine ranged from 15 to $30 per glass. The beer was, I think, eight dollars a can or a bottle. I mean, nothing on draft. It was, it was expensive, and like Bethany said, all of that we could have gotten down in the club. So yeah, wish we would but have done good. that. But Bethany actually, before our bill came, Bethany got really tired and she left, which allowed me to go back and get more shishito peppers. The way to my heart is through shishito peppers, which they did not have at the lounge. So there so you they go. So it made up and for. It. I had guacamole that was really good that was there as well. It okay. just, yeah, hopefully we can go back another time. Mm. We've heard it's really good. This is a very different um, menu than what they would normally have. I'm just checking our list of oh, all yeah. of our topics. We talked through a lot of it. What's up probably, next? It's probably been a long time. I know. Well, we went to bed. Yeah. And then we woke up. And then we went to Sapphire Falls. We did. We didn't know what to expect. We had not been outside of our resort and our resort had damage. I think that we posted that the lake had risen and it had risen probably a foot, probably maybe more. The water in a lot of places was touching the bottom of the bridges. It was up on the lawn, but we had not been off resort property. So right as we turn out, we immediately started to see the damage that was left. And that was just debris in the road. Then we got on the freeway, the freeway was fine. We got off the freeway and I'll let you tell them what I did. So, well, we're like a block away from Universal's property and there, it's a 7-Eleven, the lights are out. There's it's a It's an tree. intersection and there's a 7-Eleven yeah. in the intersection. So there's a tree pulled up and power lines are pulled down because this tree is down and we're waiting. And Justin's like, well, I could just turn into the 7-Eleven and, and go through and get to Universal. Well, there, there literally were power lines, maybe. No, I drove over the power lines. I thought line. you drove under them. No, it wasn't until I had already committed to the turn that I realized that there was caution <laughs> tape over the entrance to the 7-Eleven. But it was down. And it was down, as was the power line. And I drove over the power lines and I had a little bit of a panic. And I did look back and the police officer was like <laughs> freaking out at me. But anyway, so we, we make it to Universal's property and I thought Universal's property had way more damage. Way, way, way more damage. They did. Well, everything flooded. So I'm sure you guys saw pictures of Hulk that was flooded. And then their walkways were flooded and they couldn't use their boats because the, their... the canals were too high so the boats couldn't make it under the bridges and right and would have made the walkways just more flooded plus there was a ton of debris they didn't want the the uh boats to have to 
you know, be smashing into the debris. But we get there and it was a nightmare. There were so many people in the lobby that had nowhere to go, but we were able to check in. We were the only people checking in to the resort, which I thought was really weird. We walked right up and they were like, oh, the kid actually said, thank you for coming to the resort. And he meant it like <laughs> everyone's leaving. Uh, we were given a room. We had a water view room, which was great. We were really excited for that. But when we got into the room, we found out we were on the ground level, right as people come out of the hotel, to get on the boat and they walked straight toward our window. And so Bethany and I thought about it and decided to ask if there was a, a room that we could move to, same view, but somewhere else. And they didn't have anything. They were pretty busy, but they did end up getting back to us and saying, hey, we have a pool view. Would you like to do that instead? And we moved. We really liked Sapphire Falls, the resort. The room was cute, but it was paper thin walls and we had some pretty rowdy teenage uh, boys next to us that partied all night long, all night long. But We'll do a separate video on that. Of course we will. Hotel in our room. I was just but... talking about how we, that was our morning. Yeah. The other thing that happened that morning was that we found out that Universal was not planning on opening anything up. So no. people were pissed. We went to go pick up our tickets the customer service desk and people were having fights at the customer service desk because parks weren't open they wanted reimbursement on their tickets i needed to get reimbursement on my horror nights tickets and after seeing them fight i wasn't even about to attempt it uh we did ask about it and they were like oh you got to go to the parks and talk to customer service there so we just left it alone i was just gonna say we did get breakfast yeah we did at sapphire falls just at their little coffee place left us wanting it but was it was not fantastic it was not their normal food but they I, were they were in the same mode that disney was in where it was like right. we're just throwing things together yeah so it's it's really hard i feel like to review everything because it was just kind of a bad time they sure that wasn't normally what they would have had then we did find out that Volcano Bay was going to open. How did we find out? We found out by our friend Bridget yeah. from yeah. Bridget's Buzz. Yeah, check Bridget. Brid, Bridget. <laughs> That's a combination of Bridget and Buzz. There you go. Anyway, she was. She happened to be working that day. She works for Universal, and she was nice enough to stay in touch with us. And she let us know that the parks would be opening to resort guests. So we all grabbed our swimsuits and started heading. To, actually, we didn't need to. We had been planning on going to Volcano Bay all day long. We had purchased two cabanas and we thought that they would be open. They said that they were going to be open and then so it was a surprise to us when they weren't. So we just headed over. Yeah, so we took a bus, went to um, the guest services because we were told that we had to go to the parks to get reimbursed for, for horror the nights horror tickets. nights. Yeah. They had no idea that they were the ones that could reimburse for anything. So they had this huge line and really had no idea how they were supposed to do this. It was really interesting. Like we actually went and talked to three different people before finally this guest services person said, okay, I guess. He said, it's not my, it's not within my power to be able to do what you're asking me to do, but I'm going to try and make it up to you. That took about an hour and a half. We waited in line about an hour and a half. Admittedly, I was starting to get frustrated and nervous because not nervous but I had purchased these two cabanas and if you know cabanas are are not cheap so it was, a, it was about eight nine hundred dollars for the two cabanas and that's supposed to be you check into those at nine or nine thirty even maybe eight thirty have we checked in that early yeah, I, can't I can't remember, can't remember. maybe nine yeah because and then you're there, there through early. five o'clock it was now one o'clock and so I was like, we're not even going to get our money's worth. So I just said to the guy, hey, we'd really like to get into the park. Bethany happened to have seen a sign on the way in that essentially said nothing was open. No slides were open, nothing. And I didn't see that. So we get in, they walk us to our cabana, and we were able to enjoy our cabana. Our cabana host actually told us, you're the only people here that actually kept their cabana. So there was no one else in cabanas. So we had great service. Yeah, it was fantastic service. <laughs> The nope. fall slides were open, Krakatau was open, and then the family tube slides were open. Everything else was closed. And that includes restaurants. All of the restaurants were closed except for one. Luckily, it was the one that you, when you stay in a cabana or you have a cabana, 
that's where they order from. So we were able to order lunch. The bars were all closed. The wave pool was closed. Both rivers were closed. It was a little bit disappointing. And I was, I have to admit, I was pretty frustrated because I felt like Universal knew that they should have stayed closed, but they opened because they didn't want to reimburse anybody. I understand that completely, but it was frustrating to kind of feel misled, like, hey, we were going to open up and then we didn't. And But I get it. It was a business decision that they made and everything was fine. We ended up having a lot of fun. That night, we had reservations for Cowfish, went down to Universal City Walk. We were going well, to try to go yeah, by jumping ahead. boat. So if you don't know, Sapphire Falls is the furthest resort away on the boat line. So you can take a boat from there to Royal Pacific to then City Walk. And we thought we might be able to do that, but it, the boats were still not running. In fact, they had a few boats up out of water as we were walking. They also had, earlier in the day, the, the walkways were closed. Mm -hmm. But they opened up right as we were on our way to, to uh, Cowfish. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we did get to use the walkway. There was still some debris. There was a lot of debris. It was a horrible day to wear white shoes. Horrible day. <laughs> You could tell that the water from the canals had come up on to the sidewalk as well as all of the dirt had been washing down from the other side of the walkway. But we were able to get in and that was no big deal. Yeah. The only thing that happened that night was Bethany and I got to Cowfish a little bit before the people that we were with. Then they showed up at Cowfish while we were waiting for them. We had gone and gone shopping and Cowfish gave our reservation to somebody else. So somebody else walked in and they said, are you the flak party? These people said, yes, we are. <laughs> and they got our reservation. So when we came back and said, hey, we're here, they were like, oh, we don't have a table for you. So that was that was a problem and we had to be yeah. split up, but it was not a big deal. Cowfish is always good, so. Yeah, they did get us in and everything really at City Walk was open. That was good. Yeah, in fact, um, we were able to keep our tradition of getting dessert at Voodoo Donuts because mm -hmm. they were open. We didn't think that they would be open, but they were. Gotta have a Voodoo doll. It's no, you gotta, that's not what you gotta have there. That's what I like. No. What did I get? I got some guava. That one was that good. That one was so good. That one was really good. Let's see. The next morning, I guess that's where we jumped to that. We, we yeah. got up and we went to Universal and we wanted to be there. It was early entry. And at this point we had faith. Bethany and I had full faith that Universal was going to be open and everything was gonna be yep. running smoothly.